Is the wilderness dying? How active is RuneScape's wild in its current state? These are the questions I plan to shed some light on in this Wilderness Documentary, a five-part limited series where we go out to all different parts of the wild, where we will go over all of the mysteries of the deep wilderness. The baits, the lures, the scouts, I'll even give you some PK tips and tricks, and most importantly, we will finally find the truth. Is the wilderness actually dying? Welcome to day one of the Wilderness Documentary. I'm Mitt Mad Cow, and the first spot we are going to explore is Callisto. Callisto is a very big part of the wilderness and one of my favorite parts to PK. There's two ways to get to Callisto, well, two main ways. You can take the crab teleport, which is the safest teleport as you can see here, but it is a pretty expensive, over 10k per tab. And the one I use is the Anacarl Teleport. It takes you directly into the Demonic Runes, but just be careful, it is completely multi and clans do camp that spot out. How I PK at Callisto is I run right into the spawn, I get no aggressiveness on me, I make sure that he's not attacking me at the time and I run into the right cubby hole which allows me to switch worlds without getting attacked by Callisto, meaning I can check if the bear is there or not. And that's important, because if the bear is there, no one's killing the bear, you're good to go. But if the bear isn't there, well, it doesn't just wander around on its own. Someone took it out of its habitat to safe spot or lure it. This is where we check the safe spots. Here are the four safe spots that I do check at Callisto. Number one is going to be the most popular spot people use. It's so popular because it's in the single areas. Two, three, and four are going to be some of the less likely to be used as they're in multi, but people still do commonly use these spots. If you don't find anybody at any of these spots, I would recommend you just switch to another world as someone probably lured Callisto into a troll area and just left him there. It does happen, people like to troll all the time, but let's go ahead and start that timer and see who we're gonna find at Callisto and is this place active? All right, I just switched to World 3 through. Just kidding. I'm streaming. No one saw that. All right, just switched to another world. Uh, two minutes in, we found a world that seems like the bear is in here. That means that the bear is in possibly one of four save spots. Now, there could be more than four, but there's four commonly used save spots. So let's go ahead and see if we could find the person doing Callisto. Now, there's a rare chance that they did lure Callisto to the demonic ruins, but that's very rare. Oh, what the hell, dude? There's a PK here, bro. With a water staff. I need to turn my XP drops on. So, PKers you are likely to find are probably going to be around beginner or intermediate levels with, you know, a chance of finding those god tier brids every once in a while. But this guy looks like he's a multi PKer. Alrighty, taking them away <laughs> with the 71. Oh my god, that was so easy. Three minutes in, we already got a PK here. Oh shit, a person. Oh, oh, I almost just got a double. Oh, he's running. These are my first clicks of the day. And he's a fan, which is very nice of him. Thank you, sir. His name's literally 105 Combat. I think he has me gapped, though. Yeah, bit unfortunate. Not much you can do there. Did chance him a couple times plus a smite. We have 420k in the bag. Not bad at all. All right, let's go ahead and head back here. I want to show you guys what I usually do when I go to Callisto. I teleport right into Anacarl, which is, oh, the demonic runes. And this is probably going to be one of the reasons why you don't want to do this if you're an intermediate PKer. Now, I could have logged out, but he does not got seeds. Good fight, buddy. So that's why I usually log into, uh, or I teleport into Anacarl, but <laughs> this guy's running. No! Oh, it's funny, because I, I haven't found anyone at Callisto in so long, and the day I make a series about if the wild's dead or not, I run into three PKers in 10 minutes. And I'm not, I'm not complaining, man, because I'd much rather be proven wrong than right in this series. AGS me, anti-AGS me? Nope. Anti-AGS me, you can kill me. Oh, fuck me, dude. Good fight. What are you doing? Teleport. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, what, what's more to reiterate? 
you're going to find pretty much in most multi spots. Uh, very beginner to intermediate PKers. Maybe not in such a successful, rapid succession here, but yeah. You'll tend to find more of them in a, in a group. I'm not sure why I'm finding people alone right now, but like I said, no complaints here. You're going to be walking away with uh, about 400k loot. Bunch out for scouts. Aha, another area. Let's see what we got. Nope. They're not at the north safe spot either. Callisto will run on into the forest. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I called that shit. And I'll just chill here. But also, there's a safe spot in the forest. So you're going to be uh, better off looking in this area every once in a while. Just in case we got a freeloading Callisto just chilling. Oh, here we go. Got a world of a mace. Oh, and he's... Got Venge, could be an anti PKer. He's keeping his HP relatively low though. Ooh, I should have G mauled that. All right, and he's gonna go down to Ring of Recoil, and he was heavy anti PKing. And he's doing the uh, South safe spot, the safest one he got. Not bad. Usually you see a lot of anti PKers at uh, Venonatus, not, not too much at Callisto. That's 500k, almost 500k flat. In 23 minutes, I've already made 1.4 mil PKing at Callisto so far. Uh, let's hope it keeps uh, happening, man. Another reason why I teleport to Anacarl instead of the crab teleport is if you check the chat bar, it actually shows someone just got a kill at the Chaos Elemental. Meaning, if I hop on over, I have a chance at taking that guy out because it's just scouted it for me. Sadly, in this attempt, uh, the guy probably switched worlds to kill somebody on a different world, but this has gotten me many kills in the past just teleporting in, but it is super dangerous. Hey, look at this. I found a dude that actually belongs here. The Varix. Oh, Spider hit me. I'm gonna have to follow him. Spider's got me aggroed for now. Get that refreeze. He's level 92. So he should get down pretty easily here. But this is what you're usually gonna find. Okay, somehow Callisto got aggressive on this guy. <laughs> How'd you steal my kill? It's in single. Oh, well, let's try to get back on him. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. He had a couple more levels to take, but this is going to be the average loot you're going to see. Uh, he got a dragon bone drop, a glory, and some bolts. So usually if you're down here, you're not going to be making a bunch of money. It really is just, you know, how the wild works. But this is about the average loot you'll find. Maybe a coin stack for rune gloves, some climbing boots. This guy wasn't really risking too much. Now the rough part about PKing at Callisto other than it's in multi is uh, pretty much in that last clip you're going to find a lot of people in Varix. Varix is a strong and cheap Barrows armor which has no negative magic defense even though it's in armor. On top of that they also stack black dehyde and really cheap gear that pushes up their magic defense to insane amounts, meaning half the time you find someone in Varix, you might not PK them. So don't feel too bad, but it is pretty rough trying to take out one of the strongest defensive armors in the game with no risk. And your level is level 90. Ooh, this is kind of rare. Let me see if I can go for the one stack here. And it is happening. Beautiful. Very clean. And that is not looking like a super amount of loot. But it wasn't a super amount of effort. He had regular ruby bolts and then diamond dragon bolts, so... So he could have a chain mace on him. Oh yeah, no bulwark, just hides. That's yeah, over, buddy. Only been here for an hour, and it's been a really good hour. It's probably the best hour I've had in, in a while, PK in here. Which is, uh, sexy. And the loot is gonna be 700k. 2,000 efforts, runite ore, and just a bunch of potions. Oh my god. Yeah, just 58k. So you can see these two PKers, right? I just switched worlds as they logged in. I'm gonna go back to get some content. Maybe see if we can find our first multi-fight. Yes, sir, this guy is unskulled. This guy is skulled. So I'm gonna go for the skulled guy. I think I just made a mistake. No, I didn't. Okay. Okay, I caught the other guy. It's a ballista on the floor. This should kill him. Nope. There it is. Hello, little light ballista. How you doing? Looks like you ran into a little newbie team there. <laughs> I swear, man, this is going so well. 
Almost a mil, biggest PK, and uh, yes, the light ballista in the bag. By the way, it's not just mains that camp Callisto. You'll find a lot of lower level pures. I've even seen a level three, and here's a couple examples of that. So you could technically PK here on a lower level account. It just might be a little rare. Got a couple more Varix PKs, nothing too crazy there, but we are running into a decent amount of people, which is amazing. Oh, there's another person up here too. Yes, please. I'll try to see if I can have Smite on the whole time. Hopefully that guy doesn't come back and start attacking me, though. Off. Uh, oh, got him. Yes. <laughs> I didn't teleport. Beautiful. Okay. 103 down with the tent whip and a regular G Maul. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> no upgraded G Maul, man. This guy's living in the past. I love it. Oh, yep. Come on. I lied. It was a super easy kill. Yeah, that was 160k, a couple Callisto drops, not too bad. What the hell is this? Cellboard in here, we got. I wanted to go ahead and take him out fast because uh, I couldn't hit him for, actually I could hit him for a while. Adam and plate legs, doesn't look like any Laren's keys. But yeah, another kill for <laughs> the demonic runes, man. Ancient cloak. Yeah, it didn't look like a lot. Either way, I'll take it. No Lions Keys. Okay, that went pretty well. Taking time I took out uh, the gay Iron Man guy. Sorry, buddy. I was the last guy I killed, too. <laughs> Aw. Two hours and 30 minutes in, and I have finally hopped to every world at Callisto. We ran into PKers, PVMers, Pures, and even Iron Men. I knew I'd find some people at Callisto, but I'm actually super surprised at the amount of PVMers and PKers that I found, and I did not run into any big clans, which is weird, so quite a phenomenon there. I don't know if that's the norm or that's the regular, but what I can say is that there there are people there to PK and it is an active area in the wilderness. Now we're going to head up north to the Chaos Ellie and check is this place active as well. The Chaos Elemental located near Rogue's Castle is one of the most OG wilderness bosses in RuneScape. It also has one of the lowest drop rates in the game, 1 in 300, which might be the only allure to go this deep in the wild and fight this boss, as his drop table is not very promising. The boss is surrounded by multi, but there shouldn't be too many PKers other than one clan that I occasionally run into all the time. I don't know what they're doing out there, but they are always at the Chaos Elliot. There's two ways to get here pretty fast. If you have the hard diaries done, you can use the diary to teleport with the obelisk directly to the Chaos Ellie. I do have the diary, but what I like to do is hit the Edgeville lever, run a little north, and then directly east until I hit Rogue's Castle, because it opens up a lot of PKing spots. But let's start the timer and see how active is the Chaos Ellie. So for some reason, there's a clan or two that only PK at this castle. There is uh, some Wildy Slayers, and then of course you have the chest, which you can feed from. Not a lot of people do it. Most people just come out here for the easiest pet in the game. 1 in 300 drop rate from the Chaos Ellie. And they use these safe spots. We're going to be checking this spot. But you want to get to a location where people are going to be flinching. If you don't know about the flinching method, you don't know, need to know too much. Just know that uh, they lure the Chaos Ellie to a tree. And then they uh, just kind of flinch around it. So you're going to want to log in around here. I'll look around and if I see the Chaos Ellie, that means no one's here. And we're good. But if I don't see the Chaos Ellie, I'll start checking around and uh, hopefully run into somebody grinding a pet. Oh, we finally found someone. It's been about 30 worlds and a little bit of time. But we have someone using the North Save spot. Doesn't look like he's flinching. He doesn't seem to be giving a shit. Oh, <laughs> it's close, buddy. All right. Ooh, not bad. We got a Varix piece off that. Much more than I thought we would. So that's going to be our first kill at uh, the Chaos Ellie. <laughs> Look, it's, it's like almost dead, man. I think I'm going to try to finish it off and see if he gets pet or something. I don't know. It'll just pop up for him. He got anchovy pizzas and some weapon poisons. Okay. Well, not great. 160k for me, though. Here we go. Another guy in Varix, man. A lot of people in Varix. Probably uh, the only time you're going to see someone actually use Varix in the wilderness. Oh, he knows me. He is on this side of the wild, man. Love the vids. Thank you, thank you. What a nice guy. 
but <laughs> he's down. Hey, it's pretty cool about that. Two pieces of barracks. Much better than the last kill we got here. And, uh, you know, as long as that clan doesn't pop out, we should be good. That guy went down pretty easily. Uh, thanks for being chill about that if you're watching the video. And 300k loot, 80k, and two pieces of Varix, pretty decent. Uh, if you do get lucky and find some pretty good loot there, it's probably going to be a crossbower or a mace. And the ether is going to be the big pile of change. Oh shit, a person. Unfortunately, I do not have... Uh, I'm going to let him TB me for full. I just don't have my Gmo... Don't need it. I <laughs> don't need it. I didn't bring my Gmall because Multi, you know, his name was Misty Slave. That's going to be a Ballista, and that is why I use the Lever Teleport. Because I'll run into really cool fights randomly. Like that. Alright, PK you're down for 900k and another Ballista. Not bad. The Chaos Ellie has a couple random attack moves. One is it gets you butt ass naked, and the other is it teleports you to a different spot. And the teleportation and the butt naked spell can pretty much mess you up in a fight. It can not only take off your attacking weapon, but it could also teleport you away from your target and gap you pretty easily, which is what happened right here. So this is pretty much a big gamble if you're going to PK right in front of the Chaos Ellie, but I think it adds a little extra spice. The only thing is, he's in single, I'm in multi, so there's nothing I can do. I should have tried to sneak around better, uh, but that safe spot right there is kind of rare, you know. See, it's very rare. Oh, hey, look at this. Worth, we found someone. Uh-oh. Not good. No one else has popped up yet. Just me and him so far. But he doesn't seem like a good enough PK or no hate to take me out by himself. And I, I think he knows that, so something's going down. Unless he's just braving it. Fair enough if he is, though. Next is Scorpion Pit. Stack? Oh, what an absolute beautiful stack to pull off in multi. Oh, yeah. What an... Oh, that was so clean. I didn't think I'd get such a clean stack right there. Let me see if I can make my way um, out of here. <laughs> All right, in the bag, we're looking at 400k cash, 900k in total. Looks like he had a G-Mall on him, some blighted pouches, and a rune kite shield. Give me, give me. Ooh, got him. Nice. RNG went in. Yeah, it's uh, prayer pots. <laughs> Nothing great. Am I going to staff bash him? I sure am. I think what we'll do for this kill is we'll let the Chaos Ellie take him out. Because uh, that's a lot of effort for me, buddy. So, you got this, Ellie. Oh, he's got a bulwark? This man's butt naked of a bulwark, bro. And then the Ellie popped his bulwark off. Dude, look, he's popping the bulwark off. Yo, butt naked bulwark one item. -er. What is this game mode? Crossbower, half HP. Instant him. Flawless. And smited. Oh, thank you. <laughs> he, he, he wasn't happy about that. But uh, it's okay, because I am. Sweet. I love the quick and clean, baby. I love the quick and clean. All right, crossbow are down. Finally, give me the ether. Walking over 289k, 1.2k ether, and a couple Chaos Ellie drops. We managed to switch to every world at the Chaos Ellie in record time, and was able to find one last person on the last world, which is kind of lucky. Got him for a couple hundred k, went to go bank using the lever, and ran into a small group of people. Fought them for a bit. Nobody really died, but it was kind of exciting. I expected to run into more people, as I PK out there quite often, and it's usually a lot more active, but it's been about two months since I've last been to this area. So this is probably a really good representation of what you're going to run into. But it could always change as the wilderness is always changing. But now it is time to check the final area for the wilderness documentary day one. So we'll head a little west and check the scorpion pit. There's really only one good way to get out there, which is pretty much the wilderness lever, but we covered that already with the Chaos Ellie. To scout the Scorp Pit, you have to go inside the pit, which is full aggro of these small little scorpions, which will hit you. Meaning every time you check a world, you have to wait 10 seconds for the logout timer, which is a bit annoying. 
annoying. So hopefully we won't just spend a ton of time at Scorp Pit and find no one. Oh my god, a per oh my god, PKers. Oh my god, how many PKers? Wait, these guys are doing the boss and PK. And I got him frozen. So as long as I can get them near the scorpion and get them frozen. Rough time though so far. Oh, got him. Oh, it's Nicole on the floor. I was able to get one of the PKers, but I wanted to try to go for both as this was a really cool situation to run into where they were PVMing and PKing, which I think is awesome. So I went outside the cave to wait for that guy to come out as he was going in and out and in and out, but sadly he did juke me. The, the ping wasn't good. I don't know. It was, it was my fault. Let's be real. He just kind of walked away, but we did end up getting one of the PKers. That's going to be the cult, 160k cash. Uh, what the fuck? Is that a bone crossbow, sir? He got away. Oh, no way. We found another world back to back. Somebody was attacking him. Oh, almost got him right away. Might have lost that kill just from that. Unfortunate. Is he going right into the base, too? I caught... Nope. Well, we found another person back to back, but apparently Monk Robes is uh, too strong. Let's keep trying. That was depressing. I ran into two more PKers, but this time they weren't both inside. One was on the top of the cave scouting the outside area, and then one was going inside seeing if anyone was doing the boss. I chanced the both of them multiple times in the 1v2, ended up PKing the one risking the least, but he came right back out in no gear to rag me off his friend, where I took them both to singles near the resource area, just about to smite a god sword and something very depressing happened. There was an update that happened a little bit ago that made it that if you're attacking somebody, their hitbox is bigger than everyone else's, so that if you go to click on someone around that area, you're gonna always click on that person. So I went to freeze the ragger behind me, and then to go kill the other guy right in front of me who was out of food and prayer. But for some reason, the hitbox was so big on the other guy, I specced him out and his friend logged. Depressing. Hey, we did get some though. We get, we did get one loot. <laughs> yeah, woo, 107k. Oh, there's blighted angler fish in the game now. Want to get that freeze in there so he doesn't. Oh my god, can I get a godsword hit right here? Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be it. Awesome, we found another guy. Oh, dude, that's bad. <laughs> that's such bad loot. Walking out with a whopping 68k and some uh, nice white boots. Hey, buddy. I just want to get that freeze right away. And he's questioning what's happening now. He's got a tier 2 cape. Hit that 71 on him with the smite. And it's over. I want to get the freeze so I don't go back and forth. Oh my god, is that 30k loot? <laughs> Walking out with a nice glory PK. This is going to be the last world hop at the Scorpia Pit, and we <laughs> spent a little over an hour out here. Didn't hop throughout all the worlds because, well, that would have been a long, long time, and we didn't run into too many people. The PVMers we did run into risked literally nothing, and the PKers, well, we they, an occult PK wasn't too bad. Could have got a nice Godsword Smite if my luck was a little better. Overall, Scorpia... It's actually a little more active than I thought it would be, because every time I've ever been at the Scorpion in the last two years, I've found one person every hundred worlds, and I was able to find multiple people in one hour. So I don't know if that is just luck, but either way, it's still probably not worth it to go PKing at Scorp as the loot's super low and it's pretty inactive. After five hours of PKing in all three spots, we ended up PKing 32 people, which is which is a decent amount, because I didn't think I'd run into a lot. Really, I'm kind of on the end of where the wilderness might be dying, so this video and this documentary is going to help me also understand the wilderness better, because I found a lot more people than I thought I would. We made eight 
mil in five hours, which is not a hefty amount, but it's nothing to snarf at when you're deep wilderness in multi alone. No clan, no backup by yourself, able to profit and find people to PK. We did die twice to clans, but I'm happy about that because I get to show you guys the risk when PKing in multi. It's not always going to be kill, 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 kill. There will be clans out there, and sometimes there's nothing you can do when there's that many people attacking you. So what I learned day one in the Wilderness documentary is that Callisto is still standing strong and even strong stronger than before. It's not the most active it's been, but you can definitely have a lot of fun and there wasn't that many clans attacking me. Chaos Ellie, I could take it or leave it. Probably won't be going back there anytime soon. Not a ton of people. And Scorpio Pit was just way too long to switch worlds at with the 10 second logout timer. The PVMers were not risking a lot of GP. And I don't think anyone's really out there unless they're hunting for a pet or possibly an Iron Man. In day two of the Wilderness documentary, we will be going to some of the most popular single PK spots in the Wilderness. Will these areas be active? Have they stood the test of time? We are going to go find out. And since this is a new idea for my channel, and I do plan to upload every episode, I already got most of it pre-recorded, I just have to edit. I would really like to have some feedback, see if you guys like this kind of idea or not, because I have a ton of new ideas for the channel, and I just want to give a lot of this wilderness knowledge to my viewer base, because I really haven't been in any part of RuneScape other than the wild for the past couple of years. And I thought I'd share what I know. So drop a like, subscribe, and like always, I will see you guys in the next episode.